So today I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, productivity and how to kind of manage the creative process and some really incredible things that I've learned um, just over the last few months. Um, primarily, as I've said before, thanks to uh, the genius that is Mike Monday, who has gone through all of this through painful personal experience and is now taking the trouble um, to pass on the knowledge um, to uh, those of us that have for many, many years been completely disorganised. Um, and I just thought it would be useful just to run through how I use Trello. Um, you, you'll see that um, up the top here it says Charlie's Automatic Music Machine. Um, that's Mike Monday's uh, kind of uh, project name for uh, using Trello in this way. Um, there's a lot more to the music machine concept than there is... Um, just to talk about Trello, Trello is an important part of it in terms of keeping things organised, but it's only a small part of it in terms of how you approach the way that you take ideas from inception through to completion, um, from the left-hand screen to the right-hand screen. Um, but I'll just quickly talk through how I have taken this um, uh, this uh, process um, and how I how I use it, um, just left to right. And the reason that I'm, I thought this was important because I had a really good chat with... Um, my friend Henry uh, last week, um, who's in a band, uh, very successful, they've done lots of really good stuff, um, but it, he was saying that it's quite hard for them to uh, to kind of gather together their ideas um, and manage their time efficiently. And so whilst the what I'm going to show is me solo doing everything myself, um, there may well be some um, some things in here that, that anybody could take away, particularly people working in um, you know in collaborations or in bands. Um, it would be great to hear more about that. So, uh, if you are in a band and you feel that any of this is useful, do let me know. Um, and on previous videos, I haven't said uh, to please subscribe. Um, if you do subscribe, it's just really helpful. I'm not going to be bashing anybody with spam. It just helps me know who is taking a look um, who's who's regularly dropping in and just how much interest there is really so um yeah I've been getting a few uh, some d decent well very very good um, length of view numbers um, so when people look at what I've done um, in the various tutorial videos that I've put up here so far um, the average view length is 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 almost the whole video for, for most of them so whilst the viewing impression numbers don't look amazing um, only sort of four or five hundred. Um, the actual viewing minutes are really good. So, um, so I think people out there, if you're watching this, thanks ever so much. Um, I just really hope it's it's useful to you, and I hope it just shows different ways of using the tools that are freely available now to um, to to help you get creative and get musical. So, all good. So let's have a look at this uh, this Trello then. Um, we'll take it from the left to the right, um, and I apologise for the if you can see that black mark on my finger I sliced it with a knife yesterday so um, a little bit painful but there we go um, all, all part of the fun of it so going from left to right um, what I've got here is a column called old ideas sketchbook bookmark splurge discover draft and then a, moving across here done release labels and released now I'm going to give full credit again to Mike Monday because this is really his his idea. It's his process, um, and his process really focuses on st you start your creative process by doing something every day. So I've definitely taken that on board. I do a little bit of writing practice every single day, um, and I just do it on my iPhone. I keep the file in iCloud. I ignore it for at least a week, um, usually two weeks actually, sometimes even longer. Then I will pull those little GarageBand files into Logic and I will do the 8 bar to 64 bar conversion process um, that I talked about in a previous video, which is brilliant. That's without even listening to it. So you, I still don't even know what I've done even after I've arranged it into a 64 bar mini track. Um, so I don't listen to it, I don't know what it is. That means I don't get bored of it, I come to it fresh. A little bit later on and I've got much better perspective as to whether or not it's actually any good. But what happens after you've done your 64 bar uh, track? Well what happens then is you export the audio <clears throat> into a new Trello card and you put that into what Mike Monday calls the splurge column. So 
it's not really splurging for me anymore. I don't just do sort of random ideas and see what comes out. I have quite a, a, a process in terms of how I actually go about my writing practice every morning. Um, I do 20 minutes every single day. Um, and what comes out is not random now. It's much more controlled and the results are much, much better because I've been doing it for months and now it's coming to kind of second nature, which is, which is great practice. Practice makes perfect and all that. So after you've done your eight bar to 64 bar track conversion arrangement, you just drop the audio into a Trello card. Um, the free version of Trello that I've got here, um, actually, uh, it allows you to upload individual files um, up to 10 megabytes per card. So each of these little attachments here that you can see, these are just the, the initial audio export out from that um, 64 bar arranged project. Then I put a deadline on each one, um, a due date of a week, um, and that just means that I don't listen back to anything until at least another week has passed, by which time it'll go to red, which says it's overdue. Um, but that means that I can guarantee that I've had at least a week, probably three weeks since actually looking at it. And I do my listening back sessions um, in a very detached, sort of cold way. So I, I'm, I don't really think about um, anything other than exactly what I'm listening to. And I'm only approaching it in terms of whether there's anything good that I might want to revisit again. Um, is there a spark of an idea in there that's worth me pursuing? So what happens if there is, what happens if there isn't? Um, I'll try and do a listening video in, in later sessions, but just for now, let's just take this one up here called Drop D Minor 131. Reading that title out actually reminds me of another absolutely critically important tip that I've picked up, um, which is to name your, your project files with the key and the tempo in the file name. I never did that before and it meant that if you just had 50, 100, 250 small project file ideas, you'd only know how to differentiate one from the other if you knew what the name was, so if you actually knew the file title and you had actually associated it with the music that was in that file just by name, that's one way of doing it, um, or you could maybe put them into different folders depending on how far you've, you've developed the ideas. But if you, if you put the key and the tempo, the BPM, in the file title on the project file and in your Trello, you can easily just look at the names and see whether or not they are basically upbeat. This one is going to be quite upbeat. It's 131 beats per minute. That's drop D minor 131. That's going to be kind of upbeat. It's probably going to be a, a kind of, you know, housey, techno-y type thing. Although I don't know because I haven't listened to it for it's the 23rd of May now, it was due to be listened back on the 12th of May. So I would have done that at the beginning of May, so, you know, about three weeks ago. No idea how that track goes or that idea goes, can't remember. But similarly, Bubbles, here we are, Bubbles A minor 97. 97 and the 90s are kind of the slowest the tempos that I tend to write to. So that Bubbles A minor track will be an idea that is quite slow. Um, so I know just by looking at it, kind of what to expect, but also what I'm gonna what I'm gonna listen back to and therefore when I collate these ideas and I look to, to, to develop them or not later, um, I will know roughly what sort of a thing I'm expecting to, to deal with. Um, I'm just gonna hold the video there for now and then I'm gonna pick up in just a second um, with what happens after you've listened to the track in each card.